Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today this demo is going to be all about how to draw a figure from one of these little mannequins. Now, it, when you look in the resources folder, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of different action poses. And those action poses have a variety of different things going on, everything from kung fu to uh, marriage proposal. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to give you a little sample of how to draw one of these sets of figures. Now obviously you're drawing it from a photograph instead of from the actual mannequin because you're not in my classroom actually with the mannequin in, in front of you. Uh, you don't need to print out one like what I've got. You can just set your phone right beside the uh, right beside your piece of paper. Usually I'll put it off to the side like this. It doesn't matter which direction the paper is faced in, but I'll just set it just like this. It's really important that you get it going in the exact same direction as the piece of paper in order to make this trick work. Now, because the little rig here that I'm using to hold my phone doesn't really give me uh, too much in the way to height to work with, I'm just going to line it up with the edge of my paper over here and just draw on the left-hand side of this piece of paper. So I'm just going to slide this puppy over a bit. That way we can see eh, the majority of it on the screen here. And we're going to first go ahead and get the overall direction of the torso. So when we look at the torso, you can see that we've got this angle going on that is roughly like this. So if I had to put my pencil against the center line of that torso, I would say that that torso is traveling at an angle about like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to not use a pencil to do that with though. We're going to use a pen. Let me zoom out again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that pen and we're going to place it in the exact same direction as the body part we're trying to copy the angle of and we're just going to move it directly over. We still have to make sure that the photograph and the paper line up with each other and we have to make sure that we do not allow for the pen to change its angle or whatever object you're using if not a pen. You got to make sure that you don't allow it to change its angle. And then we can do the same thing for the sides of the figure as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the pen against the side of the body and it appears to be going at an angle like this. And I'll put my angle against the other side of the body. Now when I say the side of the body, I'm talking about essentially the from the bottom of the rib cage up to the top of the shoulder. So you're kind of drawing like an invisible line. Now when I look at this design though, this body is in kind of a three quarters view. It's a little bit angled away from us. So really the gap between these two ought to be bigger than the gap between these two. So I'm just going to scoot this one out, but I'm going to keep the angle the same. Now I'm also going to just lengthen up these angles because I think for the width that I have, that torso was going to look a little bit too short. So one thing you got to think about is just kind of comparing the relative widths. So if I look at the height of this torso, and an easy way to do that is just by taking your pencil and laying it from the highest point down to the lowest point, and it looks like about that wide, and then comparing that to the width. And it looks like the height and the width are going to be roughly the same from the widest points compared to the highest and lowest points. So if I look at mine over here, I've got the width right here going on, and if I look at the overall height, yeah, it does look like I need to get it considerably taller, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and lengthen these lines up. Now realize that these are the highest and lowest points, so that's not necessarily going to be the highest point overall, or this will be the highest point overall. Okay, so what's Let's go ahead and get the angle of the bottom of that rib cage. Now, I can see only a little bit of it, but I'll go ahead and capture that angle to the best of my ability. And by the way, you can do what I just did. So if you can kind of just use one utensil, you're welcome to. You don't have to double fist it and have a pen and a pencil in use. You can go ahead and do whatever works for you. So if you prefer using that first method and kind of going like this, and then tracing along it, but remember that's the highest point, so we actually need to be right here. Probably right about there. Because the neck would take up some of that space, right? The neck angle, about like that. Okay. So, or you can just do it the one-handed way, which is honestly usually the way that I do it. All right, now... <clears throat> After we've gotten that whole torso thing blocked in, notice I'm not adding the breasts. I'm not adding the rib cage. Uh, well, actually, maybe I will add the clavicle. And let me explain why. Because the distance of the torso from top to bottom is generally about the gap of the belly, or of the abdomen, I've been calling it usually. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. Hold on a sec. 
So if I take my pencil and I put it from the top of the clavicle, that's the collarbone, down to the bottom of what appears to be with the bottom of the rib cage, and I compare it to the height of the abdomen, they appear to be really close. I think the abdomen is just a little bit longer in this case, and that does depend on the angle you're viewing the characters at, as well as the positioning of the body. So if I'm looking down upon them, then things will definitely look shorter in the abdomen. Okay, now let's go ahead and figure that out. So we've got that much space, and we want it to be a little bit longer in the abdomen. So I think that my abdomen would end somewhere about at that height. All right, now let's get the angle of that abdomen. So here we've got the angle of the abdomen. Go ahead and bring it over. Yep, okay, sounds good. Looks like we're about like that. All right, now, in the past, I've demonstrated how to draw the abdomen, so I'm just going to talk, talk our way through it again, and I'm going to give you some examples of how you don't want the abdomen to look. So what you don't want the abdomen to look like is like this and like this. Or like this or like this. Why? Well, you're missing that angle. Okay? This would be angling in the opposite direction, and this would be going straight up and down. So that's what you don't want to do. What you do want to do, <laughs> doo -doo. Um, what you do want to do is to go ahead and make those overlapping ovals or circles right along that line. So in other words, center them along the line so that the abdomen goes in the same direction and it also looks symmetrical as it does so. So I'm going to make it come from a, I'm going to make it start about halfway into the rib cage, or the circle will overlap about halfway into the rib cage. And then I'm going to do the same thing, uh, well not as much, but I would say what about a quarter of this circle overlaps into the rib cage. And then I try as much as possible. Sometimes I can make it happen, sometimes I can't. But I try as much as possible to make my circle end right at the length that I need for that to be at. I came a little bit short of that in this case, but that's okay. So let me go ahead and just do some adjustments here. It seems like I need to stretch out my abdomen just a little bit here. So I'm going to lengthen up this one, maybe drop it a little bit too. And then I'm just going to drop this one about the same amount. And that does bring, roughly, the bottom line of the abdomen to about that height that I gave myself down here. All right, now, so I think that's a good teachable moment there. Let me just point out that I didn't make it perfect the first time. Sometimes in my demos I get lucky and I get it right the first time, but, you know, I just wanted to point out that the teacher isn't always right and I do make mistakes. Or in some cases I wouldn't even consider it a mistake. I would say inaccuracies that need to be adjusted out. So... You know, don't think that you should be doing it perfect the very first time either. All right, now, after that, we're going to go ahead and get us the hips. Now, yeah, I can go ahead and smooth out the abdomen if I want. You know, so if that's bugging you, if you're a little bit OCD like I am, yeah, go ahead and smooth it out if that's really causing you some issues. And you can also get rid of this line right here. Now I'm also going to get rid of that center line and the only reason why I'm going to get rid of it is because in reality the center line of this belly is way off center over here. So I'm just going to push it off center here as well. So that's the center line of that belly. And actually, you know, we can make it dent in a little bit since that's what the shape belly has anyway, right? Because look at that. Boom, dents in. So boom, dents in a little bit. And if you look really carefully at that photograph. I think I can see the belly button right about here. It seems a little bit low to me, but we'll go with it. All right, now here's that other hip. Let's make sure that angle is good. I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing things, but let's just make sure. Yep, yep, yep. Looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more. And then over here. Yeah, yep. Looks right to me. All right, so we got that nice flare to the hips. So she has that feminine flare that we're looking for. And then we've got the angle it kind of comes downward on that hip joint area and then it comes this way and then at eh, a slight backwards angle going this way and that makes sense because what I'm seeing here is a backwards angle to the hip so I think that works in fact we'll almost use that other line for the bottom of the groin area and then we'll just make that flare out and roll up into the side of the hip on the other side just like it looks in the photo. We can check the angle too if we want. 
yeah, overall. All right, so let's go ahead and maybe get rid of this part of the abdomen that's overlapping unnecessarily now. And let's think about focusing on the legs. Eh, well, maybe I'll do the arms first. Okay, so let's go ahead and give us the sockets here. So there's the socket for the arm. Um, I think I'm also going to maybe just pencil in the breast real quick, just because that's going to help us with placing the hands, because the breast is about that far from the bottom of the rib cage, and going at eh, actually a little different of an angle, about that angle. And it appears that I can only see about that much of it right here. And I can see about this much of it over here. And then this would be that other joint for the other arm. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this arm. So we got it going at an angle like this. Let's go ahead and pencil that in. Um, in terms of the height where it ends right here, I would say that it is a little bit underneath the rib cage, but not by much. I would say, oh wow, by coincidence, uh, I actually stopped at exactly the right height. So this was the bottom of the rib cage, and it, that was about the right height from what I saw over here on the photograph. All right, let me get rid of that line. So the other part of the arm goes in an angle like this. Sometimes it's good to double check, especially if you're doubting yourself. And in that case, I had a reason for doubting myself because, yeah, it wasn't quite the right angle on that first line. So go ahead and feel free to double check any time. All right, now, this character has a little bit of a wrist problem. Um, so you, you might notice that it kind of looks like she's broken her wrist and had it set badly. So feel free to straighten up that arm. It's really not supposed to look like that. Um, that's just... I happened to grab the wrong little mannequin, I guess. All right, now let's get that shoulder muscle going on here. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you pay attention to the rotation points, it actually gives you a clue about what direction something like a shirt sleeve might need to go in. So when you're looking at a rotation point on a wrist, for instance, and give me a second for me to get there. Remember, I'm going to be fixing this wrist a little bit. I'm going to be unbreaking it or resetting it in a proper spot. So don't think that I've messed up. I'm actually trying to make it look right. <laughs> um, so if we look at the curve that we see right here, that would actually be, and I'm talking about this curve right here. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So I'm talking about this little curve right here. Um, that kind of gives you a clue about what direction something like a cuff might need to be in on a shirt. So if you're going to be drawing a cuff on a shirt, it'd be that same sort of a shape, except you might see it curve around and go behind the other side. So a little hint for you for when you go to add close. All right, now remember, I'm not really requiring the hand to look like it's got all the little fingers and details, but what I like to do is just draw kind of a glove if you're just learning how to draw. Um, the human body. Now I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing it come out far enough. That hand looks too small and I think the shape was okay but I'm noticing that it hits the breast on the other side or overlaps in front of the breast on the other side and that was not happening in my example. I also want to make sure I get the direction of the knuckles really accurate because those knuckles I can put my pencil against the direction of them and say hmm does that look like the right direction? Yes it does. So that means that the hand will feel like it's more accurate. Let's get the ends of the fingers as well. There we go, same direction, okay. And then that's only for the first two fingers and then they get a little bit shorter because the other short fingers are not quite as long. And then here's a little bit of that finger, barely visible, touching the thumb. And yeah, now that hand feels like it's more of the right size and because I unbroke that wrist, I'm gonna add in a little bit of the breast, just imagining what the shape is based on what I remember the figure looking like. All right, so there is our torso, abdomen, hips, arm. Let's get the other arm real quick. It's an easy one, right? So I'm just going to put my pencil at the angle that I see at the side of it, and it looks like it's going at this angle, which is pretty much exactly the same as the angle on the side of the body right there. And just make sure you get the roundness of that shoulder, because that's how it 
gets the feeling of that muscle there, and then drawing it downwards. Now, one thing I've been noticing when I'm looking at things, and this is especially problematic on the legs, because the legs have more different curves and things going on, is that I'm noticing people are kind of making strange shapes. The legs don't really look very accurate in their shapes. Now, for any of the body parts, whether we're talking about arms or legs or anything else, one of the most important things you can do is to really focus on refining that shape because it's that shape that makes it look the most realistic when you go to flesh out your character. Because when you get rid of all the little puppet looking joints, it's those basic shapes that you're left with and those are what help it to make it feel like your character actually has muscles. Now looking at where my wrist is stopping right here, um, it is going to be well a considerable distance past those hips and I'm looking at my hips and either I've got my angles kinda off or I've got my forearm not long enough and I think honestly the problem is is the angle of the abdomen's a little bit too sticking out too far out. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate it just the teeniest little bit. Try to really make it a subtle rotation. And then I'll just adjust the hips by that subtle little mount as well. And maybe we can bring it to the right spot, huh? Maybe we can make this work still. So once again, I'm giving you a sample of the teacher doesn't always get it right the first time. Sometimes things still need adjustments. And you know what? This side now looks better than it did before. So maybe I don't have to erase the rest of it. Maybe the rest of it's now okay. It does look okay now, doesn't it? All right, so let's go ahead and um, take a look now. And you know what? I, I think it's reasonably close. <laughs> I, I don't think it's perfect, but I'll just lengthen it up that little sixteenth of an inch there and boom, I think I'm satisfied. All right, let's get that hand now. Let, let's see, the hand is just going to be this little thumb shape. Now, the, hand, the thumb's tough. It's foreshortened. It's pointing towards us. So are all the fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a shape that kind of looks like that hand and I'm going to get another little shape that represents where the tips of the fingers stop at and then I'm going to call it quits on that hand. All right, now the last thing I'm going to worry about is going to be the legs here. Now the leg on the left appears to be going at that angle. Let me go ahead and verify that I've got my angle good and yep, basically. Now, how far out does that leg go compared to that elbow? Well, let's see. The top of the thigh stops oh, about that far past the elbow. Wow, I guesstimated that pretty well. Okay, so that's about as far as the leg is. Now, it looks super long, I know, but you know what? I'm just going to go with it. So let's go ahead and give us that curve. Now, make sure that it looks like it's overlapping behind that hip because remember, overlapping gives you a sense of distance and space. All right, now the thigh, I talked a moment ago about how you really want to try to get those shapes looking perfect. So if you want to, feel free to start out with just like a cylinder shape or something, you know? You can do that, I don't care. But if you're gonna do that, make sure you edit it down and give it those specific shapes that we're looking for. So really try to make it have that muscular feeling that this character has. And on the lady, try to give it that lean feeling that she has. She does have that muscular feeling too. I mean, you can see I'm defining them, but on the guy you'll see that there's a lot more kind of buffness look happening. All right, now I do have to make this part go just a little bit further. It doesn't quite come up to underneath this, but it does come close. Make it swirl around and then we'll get our kneecap in here. Now let me get the angle of our lower leg real quick here. All right, looks like we're going like this, double check. Yep, good. All right, and then let's just get the back of the leg. Now, I'm not exactly sure how long this needs to be, so I'm going to use that pencil trick I talked about. I'm going to put my pencil against the whole length of that thigh, or that of that calf, and I'm going to compare it to the thigh. And it looks like it's shorter than the thigh. Let me see if there's something else I can use to help to make this easier. Um, sure, it looks like it's the distance from the back of the arm, upper arm or the bottom of the upper arm up to the neck. So this distance right here is the distance that I need right here. Good. So it looks like it's going to end right about there. Alright, so one of the tricks to making sure that 
things feel like they're foreshortened. And remember, foreshortening is just when it feels like things are looking less than their normal length because they're zooming away in space, they're angled away from you. Um, so the trick to making sure that this feels properly foreshortened is to not only make things less long, but also to make them look less wide as they're getting further away. And you remember that from two-point perspective. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, throw in a foot here. The way I always start with the foot is just to get the overall angle of the foot and give me a line where that appears to be. And then you can get the overall angle of the back of the heel, pretty much straight up and down in this case. I need to lengthen things up a little bit here. Now there is this curve that happens and then there appears to be this kind of almost a shadow that gives you a hint that there's this different angle overlapping thing happening. Now usually what I like to do kind of works out well for me. Oh, oh, and there's this bulge right here, and then it kind of flattens out a little. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of end it where the toes start, and then give myself another line that represent where the toes end. What that does is it allows you to get really specific about your, your foot shapes, because if your foot is, you know, kind of touching the ground while you're running, then it might be going like this, you know? So you can kind of show how the change in direction is happening when you're doing something with that leg, you know what I mean? So that's that's something to think about. Um, now, when the other leg is coming in, we can compare some of these heights as well. So let me go ahead and move this over. No, I can't do that. All right, I'll work as far as I can. <laughs> All right, so the angle that I've got on the thigh here is gonna be this angle. We'll go ahead and get that moved over, double check, and maybe a little higher on the bottom here. All right, and then the length of it. Let's see how long it needs to be. So if I go from the longest point to the shortest point, we've got about the same as, mm, about the same as the other leg actually. Or is the lower leg on the left hand side. So looks like we'll go to right about here. All right. Cool. Now I did have to move my paper a little bit there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in the thigh right now. And I don't really need the, the angles on the thigh because I'm just going to look at it and try to copy it. But what I'm going to do, and by the way, make sure you get this part right here, because that part right there, that little change in direction on that leg, especially with the leg in this position, that's representing basically the underside of the of the uh, gluteus maximus, of the buttock, all right? So that's actually really important, because otherwise the, the leg will look a little strange without it. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and slide this over to the other side, and I'm going to get the angle of that lower leg in there. So that lower leg angle is going to be about like that. Double check it. Boom, boom, yes, okay. All right, so for that lower leg, let's go ahead and put in the back up first because we know where that starts from. It starts from right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get in that nice curve. Now, how far down does it go? Well, let's take a look here. Um, it's going to come down as far as kind of that change in direction in the back of the calf. So right about here is where that's going to happen. There's where is that uh, where that calf is going to end at. So, oh, well, it's going to be longer than I thought it would be. Hmm. Huh. Maybe I need to check the length or the height of the knee here. Let's see, it's about that far underneath the crotch. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe I need to refine the shape of my calf is what the problem is. Maybe that change in direction happens too high. So it's going to end right about here. Okay, well, we'll go with it. All right, so let's go ahead and get the back of the calf in here. And this one will look longer because it's not pointed away from us as much as the other one does, or at least it might feel like it's looking longer. Get the front of the calf direction in, and let's see, that angle kind of cuts down. Well, let's check. Okay, yeah, pretty close. Bring it up just a little bit there. 
and that kneecap shape basically is going like this. Okay. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to put in that other foot and put in the head and then we're done. So I know this was a long video, sorry. I know I get a little blabby. Yep, that angle looks good. And let's just get in this. Now here on this foot, it's way easier to see that part where I was talking about where there's this like muscle creating this shadow and this different movement happening there. Um, that's the inside of the foot arch. Super important if you want the foot to look right to make sure you got that. And then here are the toes as a separate shape like I talked about before. All right, cool. Let's just put in a head. So her head does look ginormous, as you know. Um, and, you know, the, where it meets the jaw is honestly a little weird. I think it needs to kind of have a little bit of flesh behind the jaw like that. So me, personal opinion, feel free to shrink the head just a little bit. And if you want to give it a little bit of flesh behind that jaw, yeah, go ahead and do that too. I don't care. In my opinion, if the model is a little funky, you can feel free to freestyle just a little bit in that regards. We talked about the bust lines not really looking that realistic. You can you can go ahead and make modifications to that to make that look more like a normal person as well instead of something quite so stiff and plastic. Um, and this mannequin does have a big space right here. So I did go ahead and make that space really big in the face between the nose and the chin. And I also made the bottom of the lip a little bit lower. So yes, I know that that's different from the canon of proportions I taught you, but remember I also talked about making your canon meet the proportions of the person you see in front of you too. So there you go, there's an example. Now you can get as far into the face as you want to. Um, I'm just going to give it the basic guidelines and kind of stop at that. So there is your finished design.